back to Huntress Crafts. I'm that legendary rumored beast, Katie, and today we're talking about how to turn this into this. Wow! Using dollar store foam core board to make really cool textured pieces for your minis is super easy and cheap, requires very few tools and even less skill. I'm proof of that. If you want to learn to trick your loved ones into thinking you're an incredible artist just like I have, then follow me over to the crafting bench. First off, let's go over the tools that we need to make this work. You'll need your dollar store foam board or equivalent, a craft knife or a box cutter, a dull pencil or a pen, and I'm sure you can hear it, some tin foil. And that's it, that's all you need. So let's get started. First, we're gonna peel the paper off of this foam board. If you're in Canada like me, the Dollarama sells very cheap foam core board. I recommended buying the black because this paper peels off a lot easier. And the dark color means if you miss painting any spots in the crevices, they just look like shadows. Peel carefully to make sure that you get all of the paper off. If you don't, we can still do this method, it just won't work as well. And uh, you don't have to do both sides if you don't want to. Uh, I like to because then I use whichever side looks the prettiest. Also, who doesn't love peeling? Oh yeah. Now, decide what kind of wall you want to make. Is it brick? Is it natural stone? Is it perfectly straight and new? Or is it old and half falling down? For simplicity's sake today, we'll go with stone brick. If you're a beginner, drawing the stones or bricks shape lightly beforehand with a pencil or some other kind of marking tool can make it easier to follow the lines and keep it consistent. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Let's grab a ruler. We can go in. And all you have to do is just mark the line. Real simple, y'all. Anyone can do it. Score along the lines with your craft knife. You can use a ruler for this as well. I like to eyeball things so they're a little uneven, but that's just my style. If you want things to be more even, feel free to measure and do things your way. So now we're going to go through, in order to make a brick texture, we're going to go through and we're going to add some vertical lines in uh, a varying motion through uh, these, these horizontal lines. Make sure when you're doing this that your knife is very sharp. If it's not sharp, it will drag and snag the edges and it will produce a really rough edge that it honestly doesn't look that good. Now that we've scored our foam, we're going to grab our handy dandy pencil and start running it along the lines to accentuate them. Press it into the scored lines gently, just enough to deform the, the lines and add depth to the foam. This will immediately upgrade the look. I'm going to finish running my pencil through this and I'll touch base with you then. If you're going for a bit more of a weathered look, you can add some extra cuts and chunks missing out of the bricks. 
For instance, I like to chop corners off some of the bricks and add holes and cracks. Alright, so that's looking pretty good, but we still have one more step. After we're happy with how much we've mangled the stonework, we can now begin to do the simplest and most effective part of this, stone texture. Grab your piece of tin foil, loosely crumple it up. Make sure that you don't get it too compressed. You want to have a little bit of air in there. You should have something like this. If it's too compressed, it won't transfer a texture so nicely. It'll be very subtle. Uh, plus, it'll compress even more as we do this step. Take your ball of tin foil and begin just squishing it into the foam. Every which way. Make sure you press pretty hard. You want to squish as much of that sweet, sweet tin foil texture into the uh, foam as you possibly can. Feel free to stop whenever it feels like it looks right to you. If your tin foil does get too squish squished and stops putting more texture, uh, you can just try and unravel it as best you can here without tearing it. I'm not very good at the not tearing it part. Recrumple it again. Start over. And there you have it. If you find that some of the lines get a little flattened when you squish everything down with the tin foil, you can go back with your pencil and just re-add the depth into those cuts. And if at this point you feel like you need to uh, add some more damage, feel free. It's your art. Do it how you wish. There we go! Ready for priming and painting. Be sure to catch my next video on how to go from this to this using dollar store paint and also how to make wood using the same foam. Slap that like button below if you liked the video, found it helpful, or you're just a good human. And uh, be sure to subscribe so that you can see all of my future videos, including the one of biggest diorama I've ever made. It's going to be great once it's done. I'm so excited to share it with you. And now, a question for you guys. What's your favorite mythological creature and why? Tell me in the comments below. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. See you next time.